All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our program, Managing Digital Images with Corey Seaman. Tonight's program is a webinar format, so you, your cameras and your mics are off, uh, but feel free to use the chat or the Q&A features. Um, what we're going to do is mostly save uh, questions to the end, um, but there might be some portions where uh, that are more interactive where Corey will ask you questions. Um, uh, that'll be a little different, but uh, anything that we don't get to right away, I'll try to uh, read off to, to Corey at the very end of the program, so don't be shy about uh, asking questions as you have them. Um, Corey is the director of Kresge Library Services at the Stephen M. Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan. In addition to his work at the libraries of U of M, the University of Toledo, and the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, he is also an avid photographer, especially of the campus squirrels at U of M. Uh, welcome, Corey, and I'll turn the screen over to you. Thank you, Phil. Um, and good evening and welcome. I have a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in it. Um, you can actually see, I'll share some links, um, but uh, I'll, I'll show you my homepage, which actually has a link to this presentation. And I'll also send it to uh, uh, Phil as well. But if you go to squirreldude.com, I, I bought that as a birthday present for myself this year. Um, you can see a link to not only my photos, but also the programs. So you could relive this if you choose to. So uh, welcome. I just try to make this as informal as possible. If you have questions, drop them in chat and I can hang on at the end certainly and ask them. Um, I also have my email here. It's cseaman at umich.edu. And um, feel free to reach out uh, with any questions you may have after the fact as well. Um, sometimes as you start working in this, it becomes more and more challenging and all of a sudden you realize, you know, it was supposed to be easy and it's not. Um, and so to that end, um, what we're gonna do is today, I wanna do an introduction, talk about some key digital library services, why I use Flickr, um, and three very important things, organize, describe, and organize. And we have some um, what I call homework, but they're just more interactive parts. Um, your images, your rights, and additional resources. And here's one of my campus uh, squirrel friends. That was on uh, January 2nd, 2020. No one knew what the year had in store, but it's just I, I love the way the picture uh, comes out. So insofar as a presentation overview, I skipped the paragraph. The key takeaways, um, I wanna share my photography philosophy. Um, we all have with our cell phones, um, and here's mine, um, and cameras, we have, we're taking more pictures now than we ever have taken before. And so how do we organize? How do we get a rein on that so that when you need something or when you want something, you can find it? Um, understand where to store photos on the cloud, the best practices for making photos easy to find, and that could be for you or your family or everyone, and I'll talk about that. Best way to manage them for the long haul, and of course, if the, you can get a better appreciation for squirrels, then my job is successful. So about me, um, I've been a librarian since uh, 2005. I used to say um, up until a couple of years ago, I used to say it's a long time, but it's only one victory over OSU. We've changed that a little bit um, the last couple of uh, years. I was formerly an archivist at um, three institutions, the National Baseball Hall of Fame, Chicago Historical Society, and the Historical Society of Western Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh. Very passionate about photography as a child. That's where um, there I am with my older brother in Matawan, New Jersey. I grew up in Jersey. And uh, so if you don't understand me, you'll know it's because I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I was always done in with the double cost of photography. You, you bought the film and you had it developed and you didn't know what you were getting. And so I, I think a lot of us uh, were, were caught up in that. Rekindled my passion for photography with my first digital camera in 2007. 
very um, passionate amateur photographer. I'm never without my camera, hardly ever. Um, I've had some of my photos recognized uh, working left to right. Um, that was a highly commended uh, picture from the Comedy Wildlife Awards uh, in 2019. Uh, on the right or in the center is a squirrel in the hardy mums on campus. And that was a runner up in the Washington Post Squirrel Week contest and a winner uh, for Detroit News Celebrate Michigan winner uh, a few years ago. And then I was also in the Comedy Pet Photo Award, highly commended. And that was uh, last year in 2021. And that's uh, Kona and Gary. They're not my dogs, but they're two dogs that, that were regular visitors in the morning. One of them was looking for a warm place to sit. So I'm a huge user on Flickr. And I changed the slide because uh, I wanted to show case something I did recently. Um, I've been participating in Project 365 is where you take a picture a day. And I've been doing it since 2008, June 12th. And here are five pictures I took on our way to New York City. And in New York City, um, I did a little plane watching. There's a Singapore Airlines A380. My wife was there for a doll convention. Those are some of her art artwork. A squirrel in Central Park. My son we visited in Pittsburgh on the way. And the TWA hotel where we stayed is uh, just from a photography standpoint, it's just fantastic. The thing I love about photography is it is a series of prompts. It helps me remember things that I did. And um, years from now, I'll be able to look at these five pictures and really get a sense of what the vacation was about. So that's something I really like. Oops, sorry. So the key digital library services, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about philosophy. It is a constantly changing environment and there are benefits and drawbacks of cloud storage. Cloud storage is anything you're not actually managing on your own laptop or um, this is an external drive. Um, it's something you're, you're basically using um, network storage space. Um, insofar as good guidelines, you wanna be cautious of automatic uploading. A lot of these companies really want you to upload everything and that you're paying for storage, even if it's something that is not useful or junk. Um, you don't want to pay month, uh, more monthly storage fees than you really should. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. And like everywhere with images, uh, folders are your friends. So there's a great deal that computers can do to read about a photo but you're going to be able to know more about the photos than anyone alive. And so organizing them and making them have sense in the folders is going to be really important. So, um, and let me see. Um, so, uh, Flickr is the program that I'm going to use. You can create a free account and have up to 1,000 pictures for a lot of people, this is more than enough. Um, there are new changes this year. Uh, a pro account is $60 or what would that be? About $5 a month. Um, and it gives you unlimited pictures and far more features. That's what I use. I, I'm not a member of their community. I'm not paid by uh, Flickr or anything like that. Um, a new feature will let you buy ad-free viewing and that's ad-free for the user um, for about half that much. I, I don't think that's necessarily worthwhile. It's a great community of photographers and it's an easy way to share and integrate into social media, um, Facebook, in, not Instagram less so, but Twitter or anything else um, as things are developed. Smug Mug is the parent company of Flickr and they are primarily for professionals and it's a fee for use service. And, and I don't use that because I'm just an amateur. And here, hold on. Okay, uh, Facebook, uh, picture sharing is free. There are no limits. Um, it's really best for sharing in your network. You can create albums and it's kind of intuitive, um, but the the, the system isn't really designed as a photo sharing. It, it, it's one of the benefits of, of, 
of the resource, but it's not really intended or designed for photography. Instagram, which is owned by uh, uh, the Facebook parent company Meta, is uh, a company that really does focus on uh, photography. It's a free account. It may be public or private, and you can put up as many as you want. It's really intended for people to put up a discrete number, maybe like one photo a day or so. And it's really about um, using tags. So you see the hashtag um, Catahoula, dog park, squirrel, um, New Year's Eve, Go Blue, stuff like that, Michigan State. Um, that's how you're going to be sharing things. And it's really intended. It can be with your network, but it's also something that you can share more broadly. Next are the two basic phone providers, Apple and um, Google. So Apple, which um, their photos are in the HEIC format, which is slightly different from a JPEG format. Um, iPhone or iPad users can get five gigabytes free storage, which for, for, um, uh, for photos is a fair amount, and you can upgrade from there. And the prices are different. They're actual, they're different than Google only because they have different um, levels. Uh, but they're fundamentally the same thing. You could get two terabytes for a monthly uh, service charge of $9. Only want to pay that if you're actually saving stuff that's good. Um, brilliantly integrates with your iPhone and your Apple and your iMac. Um, it's easy to share and edit, but really only to the people that you designate. So it's really about, you know, controlling and preserving for you. Um, the cameras on the phones are so amazing and the iPhones for a long time have been just doing just tremendous work. Um, Google Photos with the Pixel and I, I have a Samsung, um, they're certainly catching up. Um, it's a free account, more storage costs per month. And those are actually somewhat similar charges. Um, I think Google might be a little more uh, right now. I think it was one, two terabyte was $9 a month. This is uh, one terabyte is $9, but they're pretty close. And usually one, one raises it, the other will raise it as well. Um, integrates brilliant with your Android phone and device. And it's a great black um, backup to the cloud. As a University of Michigan employee, I get unlimited storage. So some of the things that I share are things I never had to deal with in true disclosure. Um, but Google and uh, Apple tend to raise their prices to meet each other. A relatively new member of this area is Amazon Photos. Um, Prime members get unlimited full resolution photo storage and five gig for video. And um, if you're not a Prime member, you can actually pay a modest amount per month. This never really caught on as far as I can tell as much as it really should have. Um, but um, they are continuing to make it available to customers, and it could be really a good cloud solution for people. Um, Shutterfly and Snapfish are two of the printing services, and in fact, this is uh, a mouse pad I created with some of my photos. That's what they're best known for, but every photo that you upload to these services become something that is protected in the cloud. So if you share your favorite pictures of um, uh, the holidays, for example, that becomes part of their um, storage. Shutterfly starting next year is going to restrict uh, storage to accounts with previous purchases. So some people have actually been using it just for storage and they're trying to uh, prevent that. Two new uh, entries here. Uh, Mylio is a uh, service that basically it brings together all of your images into one giant account. And it's $100 a year, $10 a month. And so you take photos with your camera, maybe with your laptop, maybe with your um, iPad and with your phone. What it does is it's going to pull everything together. And the iPad and, the, and the, the iPhone are already integrated. But when you start looking at your camera to be able to bring all that together, it is potentially something that's useful. Um, I've been paying attention to it, but I haven't tried it out. 
uh, myself, and it seemed to have gotten a lot of buzz and, and things have been fairly quiet. The speaking of buzz, the one resource that is very, very popular is Be Real, which is a free account and you end up taking a picture uh, using both cameras simultaneously. So, and, and it's really weird. You get these prompts that says, hey, take a picture wherever you are, which could be just stupid. Um, it could be at the doctor's office. You don't want that. But you get, what it does is it takes two pictures. It takes a picture of what you're seeing. And then it also uses the rear camera on the phone to take a picture of you. And that's put in as it sort of inset into the picture. Um, Be Real was a very, very popular, and I think people are just maybe getting a little tired of it, as is the case of many social uh, media um, entities. So those are some of the main ones that are out there. I'm going to talk mostly about Flickr because it's really, it's a community of photographers, and it's much as about, it's as much about your photos as it is about the ones that are shared by others. And you can find a group or an interest that it is in anything. Um, there's a lot of groups on squirrels, dogs, cats, um, nature, parks, um, travel, air, air, um, airlines. It, you name it, there's a Flickr group about it. It's excellent for sharing and findability. I think their, their search mechanism is really great if you've, if you've described things and we'll talk about that. Um, very easy way to create albums and use tags to find pictures. So it is very, very useful. And again, that the, the ability to find pictures could be something that you do for yourself or you enable others to do for um, you. Here are some pictures um, that I took recently just in my travels. Um, uh, I love lighthouses. A lot of my photos um, are, are lighthouses everywhere we go. Um, I love taking pictures of performers. That's Lilius White, the great, uh, the Tony winner, um, wonderful performer. And we, we saw our cabaret show. Um, there's someone in a skull on the Saginaw River back in 2015. A squirrel in the middle. I take pictures of squirrels wherever I go. And that squirrel was eating a cactus in uh, Phoenix at the Desert Botanical Gardens. And there's Lefty, uh, one of my favorite squirrels. You'll notice that uh, she doesn't have a front right paw. So I don't know whether she was in, a, in a, um, an accident or um, maybe uh, survived an attack. The pictures can be anything. And so they can be travel, they can be events. Um, and uh, I, Nutcrackers next week, and my sister, uh, Law is a partner of a dance studio. And so here's pictures of two Nutcracker performances. Um, aviation and transportation are things that I really like. And I also photograph student events uh, periodically. So it's really exciting and, and fun to be able to share this. Um, and if you're not traveling, that's okay. There's a lot of ways to capture the world around you. So um, he's behind me sleeping, but my dog Runyon is the one in the middle. Um, with Iggy and Ripley. These are pictures that I've taken in Ann Arbor and Celine here. Um, one morning I just caught a goldfinch and the sun was right behind it. And it was one of those really cold mornings two years ago. And, it, and it, I've never quite seen that. And I was just so excited to take a picture. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do that really do capture the sort of the, the beauty of the everyday. What you can also do is you can take, um, you can share image files of documents. Um, this is a passport of my aunt uh, who was leaving Germany in 1938. Um, old photographs can be scanned. That's a picture of my mom and her sister at Rockaway Beach in New York. Uh, an old advertisement from uh, uh, my dad um, when he uh, had, had a store in New Jersey. And something that my son wrote when he was in kindergarten or first grade, and my dad's secret talent is thinking about standing paper and a picture of a turtle. I have no idea what that means, but it is it is charming. So we, we do like to keep it. Um, so there's really anything digital, anything, any image, even moving images, although I don't do much there, 
can be shared via Flickr and these other resources. Um, so why Flickr? I'm going to talk a little bit about philosophy of photography. Um, in a digital world, it's great. You can take 50 more pictures than you think you need. Um, La Vida Digital. And it's it's wonderful to be able to, you, you never know what you're going to capture. So you, I never just take one or two or 10. I always try to take more. I love capturing the beauty of everyday life. That to me is really important. I want to make things easy to find, not only for myself, but for others. Um, and I'll show you how I describe things, but I never tag people individually unless they're a public figure. Um, and I only share good captures, especially when people are talking. Um, when you sit there, every so often you'll see someone with a picture of them looking ridiculous. Chances are it's a still from them talking. It's very hard to talk and look elegant. So I, I try not to capture that. I, I do want to share joy with others. And every picture tells a story and captures a moment in time. Here's a mom, a mother squirrel, and a juvenile, and she's holding him back. She's holding the squirrel back and kind of waiting, sizing me up, seeing if I'm safe to come out. Um, one of the things I love about Flickr and, and, and other photographic sites is I get to see what other people are doing and it helps me improve. And maybe if I take photographs of lighthouses all the times, but I want to see other ways to photograph it, other seasons, other lighting conditions, other elevations. Um, I always carry my camera. You just never know what you're going to see. Um, with photography, whether it's a phone or a camera, you learn by doing always want to make sure you take a lot of pictures and again taking pictures at different seasons lights and opportunities is great um you want to be able to find your own style um this is a photo i took with one of my little point and shoots but i just love how it came out uh with the person with the giant green umbrella and everything else is very dreary and Draw influence from others, but find your own eye. Um, every great photo is a, is a confluence of opportunity, artistry, and equipment. Um, here's my niece uh, a couple of years ago at an equestrian event. Um, I use Canon uh, DSLRs, um, and now I have a mirrorless. I have my first mirrorless, and I absolutely love it. Um, Canon, Sony. Panasonic, Nikon, Olympus, Fujifilm, they're all fantastic. Um, other brands as well, those are the ones I can remember off the top of my, my head. Um, it's always very, very common for people to want to buy new equipment before they go on vacation, before they go to a, a, maybe a horse show. It's a horrible thing because every camera, even if you have a different Canon camera, they all have their own psyche they have their way that they work um they might shoot dark they might shoot light you need to know how that works before you want to take it on vacation or to an event um i did a dance recital once with a borrowed camera and it was a miserable experience um you also can be an important part of your toolkit um here's runyon on new year's day this year it was really rainy and so we didn't go to the dog park um, if you're able, change your elevation. So I like to do that with squirrels. I always get down on my hands and knees, even when I'm in my work clothes. Um, and uh, especially true with dogs, it gives you a whole different perspective. Um, here are the bridges going up. So I was able to actually get in front of them. And you just get a nice uh, point of view. A photograph at a higher shutter speed, if you're controlling that, and you can always brighten a picture, but you can't retroactively focus it. So that all being said, I want to talk about the three things, and these really apply in any of the situations. I'll talk about it in Flickr, and I'll talk about it in Google, but it works for Apple. It'll work for any of these resources. Organize, describe, and organize again, and there'll be some homework. And there was a question about slides, and I'll share a link, uh, but if you go to squirreldude.com, you'll see a link for photo photography programs, and I'll make sure Phil has it to send to everyone who's registered. 
Okay, so the most important thing to do is to keep your pictures organized, just like these four juvenile squirrels. Um, the natural way that photos are organized is by date taken. And if you think back in the film age, you had 36 exposures, 24 exposures in a roll. They were processed, they were put in an envelope, and the envelope could get shuffled around and you didn't know necessarily one day to the next you always looked at if it were like kid pictures you'd look and see how old was the kid maybe they had the date stamped on the back every digital image whether it's from a phone or a camera should have the date that it was created and that is a great way to organize it we're going to use folders and subfolders to fine tune where the fold uh, where the pictures go and in Flickr, you can order your upload so that the picture you want first will show that way. And I'll, and I'll actually show that to you. Um, time spent here makes it easier to find items later. So what I have here are folders. And this is basically how I have things set up on my computer. And what I will normally do is on my computer, I'll pull together um, the uh pictures from my camera, and I'll download pictures from my phone, and I'll organize them all together in one area. That's how I'm creating a manual version of my Leo. So if I was at an event and I took four pictures with my phone and 30 and, and maybe 200 with my camera, I'll combine those in one folder and start going through those. Um, I organize them. And you can see over here on the left, this is actually sort of the high level. And this is an old slide, but you can see I have things broken down, all the pictures I took in September and October. And once you actually go into that folder, you can see that there's subfolders. So this was from a cruise we took just before the pandemic. Um, and you can see that you know these are photos on February 17th during the evening. This is when the ships we saw in the British Virgin Islands, um, US Virgin Islands excursion and the different kinds of birds that we saw, hummingbird, banana quit, et cetera. And so that makes it very easy to organize. And that's something that I think is just, it, it, it saves a lot of time. Um, in Flickr, I use albums, which is a very, very common way to bring similar things together. So I have a, one for my trip to New York City, and then we went on a, a vacation afterwards. Um, pictures of uh, Central Park squirrels. All of these different things are in an album. Actually, it's a New York squirrels, but it's neither here nor there. Um, and I'll actually show you that because we can go to the, the Flickr page. On uh, 2018, I was on a faculty tour, and we drove around the state. Um, I took a total of 3,242 photos um, that were good. I probably, in order to get that, I probably took around 6,000. Um, but what I also did was created a an album with 320 really good photos. So that was a way to actually differentiate. So as I share, was able to share it with others, they didn't have to look through all of them. Google Photos enables albums, and it's an easy way to find this, and I'll show you this in a bit. And actually, we'll just jump in right there. Um, what I'm going to do is actually change the screen, the share, jump off of this, and go here. I'm going to say new share, boom. Okay, so you should be looking right now at my um google photos and this is actually really cool i'm going to pull this over here um so you can see these are some pictures i took this morning there's iggy and runyon uh playing and um we're just goofing around this are some pictures near my house in ipsilani um uh just uh here's the nutcracker rehearsal um i just took these with my phone uh, but you can see I have things albums broken here. And here is some pictures of Runyon. I have way too many pictures of my dog. Um, but here's the digital homework. And what we want to do is we 
want to look at all of our photos and start dividing them up. And the way to do this in a more manageable way is always break things down into thirds and say, okay, I want to go through and actually find uh, maybe three groups. So I've got pets, uh, Christmas, and food. So here's Runyon, Runyon, uh, my cat. Here's my cat, Cosmo. Um, so I can pull all the, all the pets together. Uh, there's pictures of the holidays, and here's with family. This is a Bush Noel. I think that's what it's called. Um, uh, Christmas. Uh, here's something that's actually in both. Um, and food, which is uh, these spices, Pegasus restaurant, cookies, uh, the cake, etc. So what you can start doing is actually breaking these down and then break them down yet again. And if I look at this, this is a recipe I made uh, in the air fryer. Uh, this is salmon. If I go here to information, you can see it's in digital homework and you can see that it was taken on January 19th, I guess this year, um, because it doesn't show me a year. Yeah, 2020, 01, 19, so January 19, 2020, um, tells me, what camera I used, it was a Samsung. And um, what I can do is I can add a description, salmon air fryer. So I can do this and this will actually make it uh, possible to find. One of the things that's tricky though, is that it takes 24 hours for index terms to actually um, materialize. So this is something that you, you, you can run into. Um, here is uh, a, a photo of Cosmo on top of the radio. And you can see it's an album, it's digital homework. I can take it out of that album. So I can click here and actually go here and I could uh, remove from album. That doesn't necessarily delete it, what it does is it just removes it from the album. Okay, so that's something that's really important out there. Um, so Google Photos lets you do a lot and you end up with just pages upon pages upon pages of, of pictures. And for me, it's mostly the exact same things over and over again. Um, here's an event at work. And so you can go through and really try to make sense of this. Um, I, I tend to use this a great deal when I'm on vacation because I think it's a neat way uh, to actually uh, capture some of the things that are out there. Okay, so this is these are Google Photos, and the 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 trick really is to identify different resources. And you know, here's Detroit. This one I think I just put there by mistake. Um, these are the two pictures that are most important in there. Um, and it's going to actually do that for you. You can also look at utilities and you can look at different things. It's pulling together like Panorama and I'll show you some of those in a bit. Uh, but this is really uh, kind of a, a neat way to do this. But Google Photos is great. You really need to take a look at this and start making sense of these. Um, when you put them in an album, they still live here in the main photographic group. And if you want to delete them, what you can do since this is, uh, I don't need this one. I can go ahead and delete it. And then if you ever have any remorse, what you can do is you can go into the trash and I can click on this and um, I can remove it. I can restore it. By clicking on that. So there's it, it, it protects it for 30 days, which is important because you just don't want to lose anything. Okay. Um, so that is the homework assignment. Let me go back to um, the presentation. Share. Okay, you should be looking at the slideshows right now. Corey? Yeah. Um, we had a question uh, you had mentioned. Um, subfolders and albums and someone was wanting to know what's the difference between a subfolder and an album mm. 
Good question. Um, there is no difference. It's just um, a subfolder would be a folder underneath another folder. And in fact, um, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go back a few. It's easier to see this. So this is the, the folder um, uh, February 2020 Seth Cruz. And all of these are subfolders underneath it. It allows me to organize things by an event. So if we have a holiday party and I take a lot of pictures and I you know, want to organize it by family, um, then I can have a folder underneath each of them rather than keeping them all at the same level. It's really, it's kind of a librarian data geek thing. All you're doing is you're basically organizing it. If you think about the way that you may have manila folders, um, and then if you have your tax returns, you have each year of a tax return in a separate folder, but then you have one file drawer that is all of your tax returns. That's very much the same concept. So you have a, a large grouping of this, in this case, a cruise photos, and then you have individual folders underneath it. I hope that makes sense. Um, but a folder fundamentally is the same thing. A physical, um, a digital image can be in one folder. Um, the difference in Google uh, and in um, Apple is that they can be in multiple folders at the same time. So let me skip ahead. So I'm going to talk about describing this, and I'll actually show you this in, in a few minutes. So describe Hamlet, Act 2, Scene 2, words, words, words. What are you reading, Hamlet? Uh, words, words, words. And this is a picture from Stratford, um, Ontario, which is wonderful. With Flickr, you have a title, a description, and tags. And um, in, in Google, you really don't have anything. You have a, a, an ID where you can put down some terms. Um, here, you actually have uh, description, title, and tag. So it gives you a little more control. Um, there's relatively few limits. And this actually is what we call the photographic metadata. This is actually how you're going to find things. Uh, with Instagram, it's all tags. So when you see the hashtag, um, uh, Ripley the dog, um, that's going to be the only way to actually find it. Um, with Google and Apple, you can add info, but they seem to be more based on uh, artificial intelligence to find items. Tags are the absolute best way to have people find your images or to have you find your own images. And you can create all sorts of tags to direct people to items. And the tags can be added after the fact. Um, they can be applied to the same description to multiple items. And these are the search terms in both Flickr and search engines. And this is how uh, some of my resources get found um, uh, by others. So Google Photos has a great artificial intelligence tool for tagging pictures. And it's still a work in progress. So you can see on the left, I talked about Ripley the dog. Um, it created a panoramic of Runyon and Ripley in four different spots. So it looks like there's five dogs, but there's only two. Um, even weirder on the right, I don't know why it put these two photos together, uh, but you can see Runyon had, was looking out and then he got up on his hind legs and it decided it needed to be smashed together. Um, I, I just think these are really hilarious. Um, they're panoramic. Their AI is getting way better every day, but right now, sometimes it, it creates some funny things. Another thing, this was from last year in uh, Petapixel, one of my favorite websites. Um, a traffic camera mistakes a woman for a car. She had a sweatshirt that said knitter or t-shirt, and um, she was walking on the road. And the camera, because the bag is, is uh, obscuring where the nine was, thought it was this car driving in the wrong uh, lane. So it issued her a, a ticket 
and sent the picture of the woman as the proof that it was the car. So um, AI does have a lot to, to do, a lot, lot to learn. Um, but one of the things that is really great is, is tags can mean things that are very common or things that are only to you. Um, so I create a um, code uh, when I go on, on, on travel. This is for a cruise. It was a cruise ship, the sailing date, February 15th, 2020, and the location, Tortola, uh, British West Indies. This is an American Kretzmann. Uh, it was a beautiful bird. He was just hanging out near the port. And so I can use that code to bring all of the items together. Occasionally, you need to re-index, but typically, uh, you don't have to, and it's been really good. Um, tags can have external or internal meanings. They all live together. Um, sometimes the tags will not retrieve the image. And you just need to re-index them. And usually it takes about uh, 24 hours. I have not seen that behavior recently. Um, images with no tags are only, are, are virtually hidden. They're very, very hard to find. So that's an area where you can actually share items um, and make them available just to, just to a few people. You can also limit who has access to the image on Flickr by limiting it to friends and family or making it private. Um, here's a ship. I, I love uh, maritime, um, ironically. Um, this is the uh, cell phone loader, uh, Le Tri, uh, the Lee Tregurtha, uh, heading downbound on the St. Clair River at Port Huron, this was back in 2018. And you can see the tags that are listed there. So if you search for freighter or Tregurtha or um, Interlake Steam Ship Company or the Lee A. Tregurtha or Port Huron or Sarnia, you'll find, you potentially can find this. And then there are these codes that are a little more obscure. And those are some of the ways that I track some of the Project 365 work um, that I'm doing. Here's Tipsy, one of my favorite squirrels. He's not with us anymore. Um, he had a neurological disorder and he would always look like he is um, drunk or so, but he would lean back. So we called him Tipsy from Ipsy. And um, I would take photos of the squirrels in our, in our backyard. We have red and fox squirrels and um, and then just add the tags there. And that made it very, very easy to find. And I'll show you how I, I do this when we're doing the homework for this section. And so even though there's a lot of text here, one of the things that I do is basically write it all up and then modify it every time. I've been to the dog park hundreds of times and visit with Run Jits with Run Dog Park, and then I'll put today's date and I'll just have a little bit of information there. And, and fundamentally, even the tags are mostly the same. I may just change the date um, or something along those lines. And here are some pictures. There's Runyon and his friend Rosie. And um, there is uh, McFlurry and Finn. Um, they're not littermates, but they, they just hung out together on a beautiful snowy day. It was one of my favorite pictures. Um, and here's Raina, and we cut and paste, and I'll show you how that works um, in a moment. I'm going to skip over this, and what I'm going to do, actually, instead of doing this homework, um, what I'm going to do is show you what it looks like to load photos, okay? So like the cooking show, what I did was I actually started this earlier. So I'm going to go to screen two. And here are some pictures of a hawk I took um, in August. And um, what I'm going to do is just get this loaded. And while it's loading, uh, I think we have a couple questions that we can ask. Here is the um, here is what my file looks like: Junior red tail hawk, Ypsilanti, Michigan, July and August 2022. Um, and what I might do is I might change the dates here. Let me just change this to August. Okay. 
And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on this and I'll just cut and paste it here. I'll highlight all of these. And it doesn't make that noise, but I do it every time because I don't know, just something about it. it um, and then I'll do one more. So these are the tags, these are descriptive terms. And then what I'll do is I'll click to albums. And these are the ways that I help identify it. Occasionally you'll see this where it'll pre-select. And that's just, it, it's actually uh, just some noise that's happening. It's not a big thing. Um, if I search for Ipsy, um, I can see Ipsy birds and that's what I want. And so what I can also do is change the order. So if I wanted to move this and make this the second one, just pull them over here. And I can pull this over here. This is the one, if I click on this, this is the one that I want to be featured. It's staring me down. And then um, I'm going to upload these. Okay. And... So I've got, what is this, about 15 pictures. Um, it doesn't take that long, but in, in full disclosure, they've been sitting here uh, for a while. So um, typically, if you have good internet, it'll actually be fairly quick, but it could take a while, depends on the size of the photos. And what you can see here, originally we had these three photos first, and here is the, the, the picture of the hawk flying, and here's the one of him sitting on the roof. And if I go ahead and click on this, um, I can click on this to download different styles. I can click on this to share it via Facebook, uh, Twitter. This is Tumblr, and this is Pinterest. I can also use this link if I want to send it to someone. Um, I can add it to a map and I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I can add it to a group, add it to, if I go birds. So backyard bird watching, bird fanatics, um, birds. So it's, it's adding each of these. Um, here are the tags. And then I can change it from public I can change it to private, friends, family, friends and family. I'm gonna leave it public. Um, anyone can comment and um, safety level, everything is safe. It could be moderate or restricted. All my stuff is safe. Um, and then uh, you can also change it to virtual photography, illustration, screenshot, or photo. Most of my stuff comes over as photo. Corey, we had a couple of questions about your tags. You have uh quite extensively tagged some things those are all your tags that you added correct they they are they're the tags that i've added however anyone can use any tag um i've created a somewhat unique system that i follow um and and it actually if you look at this um let me make this a little bigger do 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 Okay, so I've got Ypsilanti, Michigan, um, summer birds, um, red tail hawk, Ipsy, August 2022. No one else has this exact tag, but then um, there's also birds of prey, and a number of people use this. In fact, if I clicked on this, control C, I don't know how long it takes. Ugh. Birds of prey. Well, so it'll show me my photos. Ironically, this is a photo from Alaska. Um, and this is from people I follow. And this is from everyone. And so is there a can, limit to the number of tags that can be on a, a single picture? Not that I know of. Um, I don't really think you can hit that limit. Um, I think that you would end up, you would your fingers would hurt before you hit the limit, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it um, does. And that same that same person asking wanted to know if the AI still um, 
if you have tags on a picture, does that override AI or does the AI still pick up your pictures even if a tag isn't typed in? The, the AI sometimes, um, so Flickr doesn't typically use AI. Sometimes it will do this. Sometimes it'll add a, a term that you don't add because it's trying to be clever. Um, it's more of a Google thing. And in fact, if I go back here to the presentation, um, so I'm back at the presentation uh, because we actually wanted to do this. You can see here's a picture and it's labeled as birds. And it is not a bird. <laughs> it is a raccoon. And, um, and so AI will get better in the coming months, years, decades. Um, but right now, and typically what the AI does is it can help um, uh, complement. And a lot of what, um, a lot of what, I'm going to do you one last thing. I'm going to go back. Um, I'm just going to go back to, so if I go back to photos and go to the very top, oh, sorry. Every so often you can sit there and it, it, it does a funny job of identifying people. It does a great job of actually see page up hold on does a great job of here are photos in the woods and yeah it, it does a really nice job uh doing that um there is view all albums where was it explore oh okay so here's really here a real freaky thing so here's my son. Let's pick on my son. And yes, it actually is finding him using AI features. Um, and that is not my son, but well, there he is. Uh, that's his cat. This is him at Eaton Park. Um, it is really pretty remarkable um, how it captures him. And it, it does a really good job. And this is... <laughs> He broke his hip and uh, here's the family. So it does a really neat job of enhancing it. So what it doesn't do is it doesn't modify the actual file itself, but it sort of cobbles these things together. And so here's some pictures of me for better or worse, mostly worse. Um, so that's the AI sort of, um, uh, under Google, Apple's going to do the same thing. And the funny thing is, so so this is actually, um, it doesn't do as well. This is a picture of Rosie, the golden retriever. And this is confusing it with Iggy, the other golden retriever. Um, so it's, it's not quite perfect, but it is pretty remarkable. And you can see, you know, pictures of fogs, bridges, moon. It does a, a really good job. Cooking Hungry Jack mashed potatoes. So I'm going to go back here. Okay. I'm going to try to be, ooh, definitely went out on a rabbit hole, but wrapping things up. Um, even though we are relying on the web to the cloud storage to preserve this, we can't guarantee that it's going to be perfect. And so we cannot really fully rely on any commercial service to be continually useful. Um, I was just at the TWA hotel when I was a kid. TWA was the epitome of elegance. And, and now that they're not around Pan Am the same way. So they might drop the service. They might institute a cap. You need to have a backup system. Um, I use the same file structure, and here's where I have the subfolders. Um, the, here are the uh, folders of all the months that are done, and underneath each of these folders are the individual things. So rather than just put them in a subfolder where I'd have a thousand, ten thousand photos, I want to have them organized in case I need to find photos that I took of Runyon and. Maybe the day we adopted them, it was at May, 
May 4th, because it's Star Wars Day, May 4th, uh, 19, uh, 2019. Okay, so this becomes a, a really important way. Um, when converting physical objects, if you're scanning old photos, um, always keep the originals, especially if they're very important, if they're family. Um, all the descriptive data um, needs to be created. It's not going to actually pull that. And so you're going to be using your memory and what you remember. And sometimes you look at a picture. I, I used to share a picture of myself as a baby, and it turned out it was my brother as a baby. Uh, but my mother is the one who said, you know, you're wrong about that. So I figure she would know more than me. Um, some services um, are listed on links on the program page. And um, there's some great services in Michigan. And ultimately, they can restore the image, but they don't know what the backstory is. Um, your printer, I have a, th a three in one printer, and it does a great job with scanning. Um, here is one of the, the objects. This is actually um, uh, backing up is so important. And it's also important to do it periodically. And this is where I'm not as good. You need to do it periodically when it's on your computer in case you have a computer failure. You don't want to lose that. Uh, one of the things that this is a great time of year to get additional memory. This is actually a one terabyte uh, solid state drive that I really like. Um, I take this traveling. So everything I take, I have a backup. So this is a, like a complete um, uh, um, version of my trip. And so I have a number of these things. It's just a matter of, of keeping them organized. Really quickly, a couple things to wrap up and then we'll jump into questions. Your images, your rights, you can limit who sees the pictures. Flickr has both public and private pictures. Uh, you can create uh, Instagram. You can create all of these that basically allow no one else to see it. And this can be important for privacy or other reasons. Um, once they get out, they're out. And so that's always tricky. Um, I use Creative Commons with mine. And I have the links here and the presentation link will be available. And People have been able to use this. Remember the early days of the pandemic, you couldn't find toilet paper. This is a picture I took in Bushes and Celine, and it was actually added to the sort of Library of Congress um, uh, collection of uh, pictures of American life during COVID-19. Um, a good friend, uh, jo uh, Joan Rupert, is a television writer, a producer, and she found a box of negatives from her father, who was an amateur, an avid amateur photographer who died when she was young. And um, these have been a great source of, for her to learn the family and to learn more about Chicago's near west side. If people can find it, they can use it. For me, it's been very important. And here's, uh, there's a story of the Peony Gardens in Michigan history, and they use one of my photos, um, a picture of a, a ship since I tag each of them with the, the name of the ship, I tend to get used. The US Fish and Wildlife Service has used a couple of my photos, including this um, squirrel. And this squirrel is not as large as it seems. The reason why the squirrel looks so large is because A, it was December and they're getting ready for winter. And so they weren't chunky, they were just living outdoors where it was cold. But I also dropped down on my knees. And that way I get a different perspective. I'm not shooting from up top, I'm shooting from sort of eye to eye. And so you get a very, very different look. And it was their fourth most popular tweet in 2021. Um, here's some, uh, you know, Lighthouse uh, Airport, um, uh, Haida Gwaii, um, was, there was a, a, a freighter adrift. Uh, that was a picture I took of the, that same freighter when it was in Charleston, South Carolina, a couple of years earlier. And with that, I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to show one last thing and then we can jump into questions. Um, and let me go here. And I'm going to go here. So this is actually um, a chat. So here are, oh, I'm going to send this to everyone. I'm sorry. Oh, host and panelists. Oh, I don't know. Did everyone see that? I am 
I'm not sure if the chat is. I think everyone can see it. Uh, anyone okay. that's down at the chat. Okay. Yeah, that's the home. And then here is someone had asked about the slides. Um, here is the program slide page. So you can see actually that here is, if you want to relive this, you can go through and you can actually look at the presentation. Um, here is uh, the links that I have for the, the National Michigan Camera Shops. It, the resource of the digital conversion services, um, their areas. I, I've chose a few in Michigan. Maybe don't have anyone quite Macomb County, um, but Livonia is not that far, hopefully. Um, Farmington Hills as well. And here are the service links as, as well. Um, and with that, and from here, if you go to photography also. So if I go here to, um, you can see uh, photography. Oh, I see. There it is. A variety of pictures and just my favorite sites and, and where you can look at my albums. And here are the albums I have. Um, uh, 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 cruise plane watching. Here's the TWA hotel, lighthouses of Washington, lighthouses in New York Harbor. There's just a variety of things, dance, Barbie, etc. And so I might leave this up. Leave this up, and um, it's eight oh two, and so thank you. I, I've gone over. Um, I think five. there's a is there a question? Yes, uh, um, you've been okay. doing great answering questions as we've gone. I lied and said I was going to save them to the end, but I thought eh, it might be <laughs> good to do it as you're on that segment. Uh, but there is one we haven't gotten to yet. Someone asks, what do you do if you want to change platforms? So you have everything organized and uh, and um, let me ask it the way they ask it. Um, okay. Let's say you have all your images under Apple and you want to switch to Google Photos. Is there a way to um, simply change platforms? No, there's no there's no simple way to do it. I think, I believe, um, <laughs> uh, Wendy's question is going to scare a lot of people, so I apologize <laughs> in advance. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you think about skipping rocks, you're gonna, the, the easiest way to do may be to actually go in and grab all of the photos um, from the service that you're leaving and move over into the new service. So if you're pulling it from Apple into Google or vice versa. The other thing to do is if you're doing this at the time that you're actually getting a phone, maybe you're changing into an iPhone or away from an iPhone, talk to the people at the Verizon store, the AT&T store or whatever, um, because they might be able to help. And they may have the ability to go in and basically grab all of that because it takes a lot of time to move that data. And that could, that's one of the, the tricky areas. So, um, if you are moving phones, my recommendation is to talk to the people, um, especially if you haven't quite decided yet, um, because they're a little more, if you're thinking of moving into an iPhone or away from an iPhone, the, the, the companies will be a little more excited about helping you than if you did that three months ago. Um, but one of the things that I enjoy doing that, that I, I think is important is that you could actually download all of the content. Um, the one tricky thing um, we're looking at the screen. If I go here to photos, um, I can download 500 photos at a time. So it's it it can be a little tricky, um, but you can grab here are all the pictures from today. Here are the pictures from yesterday. If you've had the phone for a long time, it might be a while. Um, but that's how I typically do it. And I normally do it on a once a week basis. I go in and clear things out. So I hope that answers uh, the question, Keegan. Um, it, it, it can be tricky, but fundamentally, there should be, it, it, it should be fairly straightforward 
Um, the question is, the people at like Verizon have access to tools that we don't have as individuals. So they might be able to actually do that. Great, and, and Yuri, it sounds like you made a reference to Wendy's question. So you, yeah. uh, are you able to see it on your end? Yeah. Um, how long do you think a person should spend organizing and uploading photos per week or month? Um, to, so as long as you want. Um, I am obsessed and, and I take a ridiculous amount of time, uh, but it keeps me from chores. And so on that note, I, I'm going to say, you know, it's been very beneficial. My wife's in the next room. She might disagree. Um, I play with photos every night. Um, when I'm traveling, I'll, I'll take some time, some time off. Um, but if you, you know, if you could do it every week, the more that you can do it every periodically, every week, every other day or so, if it's a rainy day and, or maybe you're watching a movie and it's not that good, open up the laptop and, and start doing that. Um, I tend to do it every night, um, but I'm ridiculous in the number of pictures that I take. I think if you did it once a week and, and, and made it like a, a normal thing, and especially when you get started, you might have a fair amount more to do. Um, and the trick is if you can identify pictures that you want before you download them, it makes things a little easier. Uh, you know, if you're clearing out a storage locker, um, if you don't have junk there, it, it actually will move through pretty quickly. So I tend to do it um, every day um, and, and a little, but I also pick it up and put it down. So that to me makes it it makes it easier. I don't have to set aside an hour or two because there are many days I just don't have that. But it's a way that I use a lot of um, quiet time. Great, thank uh, you. You see the last do, question, do you combine photos with others like your wife's or kids? If so, how do you do that? So, um, so it's a really good question. Um, what you can do, so I have access to my account and um doo -doo -doo. i'm gonna open up i don't think you can see it i'm gonna open up um a program and so doo -doo 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 -doo. um let's see if i can okay so if i go here What I might do, the, the way that you can actually do that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna upload. So I think you can see this if I go here. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna do is, for the sake of ease, I'm gonna bring it into Google Photos. What I can do is upload it here. And I'm gonna upload it from the computer. And I think, here it is. So it's a picture of something my son made tonight. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna leave it like that. But now it's in my photos. And I will sit there and go, what the heck is that? I still don't know what that is. Um, but uh, he made that for dinner. I think it's pancake bacon, and I have no idea what this is. <laughs> um, it's avocado. I have no idea what's underneath that. Um, so anywho, um, what I can do is I can upload, I can grab the photos that I want. And if we have uh, Yahoo Messenger, if you have using Signal, any of the instant messaging, if someone sends you something, you can do that. Or um, what you can do is, uh, you can have someone share their folders with you um, and you can share it via Drive or share it via Apple iCloud and then pull things together that way. If And I've done that when my wife has taken pictures of me with her phone. Um, that will be something that uh, what I'll do is I'll just grab the folders, grab the, the photos and integrate it with 
um, the the pictures that I have and then upload them all together. Uh, but most of the photos that I manage are just mine. Um, but it could be really nice if you're taking a family vacation to have pictures from all the different devices and all the different perspectives. So that that's certainly a way. Um, I tend to manage it at the computer level um, and then upload them all together. Great, thank you. Um, I don't see any additional Q and A's. Um, I lied earlier, I said uh, the chat feature was enabled. It sounds like it's not, but it looks like most people figured out the Q&A button does the trick. Um, and yeah, you I think you've answered everything. Thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us this evening. Um, and again, your um, website is squirreldude.com. And uh, this video uh, will be posted to the library's YouTube channel. So if you want to review, uh, that should be up. Usually it's up within a few days. Uh, but thank you again, Corey. And thank you all for coming and have a, a wonderful evening and happy holidays. Thank you very much, Phil. And thanks, everyone. If you don't have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm real happy to help. It's cseaman at umich.edu. Great. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.